There are 77 container vessels waiting in California's San Pedro Bay. It's a record high, but some of those ships are unscheduled container charters with no docking appointment. And these maritime pop-ins are causing big problems both on the water and on land. Lori and LaRocco joins me to discuss the impact of these unscheduled. How can they pop? You can't just send a ship and exp What are they thinking? They can and they are. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> and, and, and it's insane. And when you look at that 77 number, the amount of unscheduled vessels really is a very good portion of it. In fact, about 21 of them. You have 17 vessels in the port of, from, that are waiting for the port of Los Angeles, five waiting for the port of Long Beach. And what happens is these vessels are giving the port 96 hours in advance saying, hey, I'm here, and then they have to anchor. And so this is adding to the congestion that we're seeing at the ports. And these are generally smaller vessels that aren't, you know, and so we named some of the merchandise that might be on these container yeah. ships. Explain who this affects mostly. This affects any U.S. importer, really. Um, you know, it, these range from anywhere from, say, like 1,200 containers to almost 9,000 containers. But every retailer is using them. And what happens is, this is there's really no rule against of what we're saying. There's no regulation about it. Absolutely not. And, and there's a glitch in the system. And it's really ironic because we have the Biden administration putting pressure on the ports to do this. And here's the glitch. U.S. Uh, Customs gets the manifest of these vessels about 30 days in advance. And then you've got the U.S. ports that only get 96 hours. U.S. Customs doesn't share this data with the ports. It's insane. How can you plan? You know, you covered this beat so well, but there's so many people who are waking up to just how fragmented and, and old world mm -hmm. shipping is. And you wonder if this should be an example when the Biden administration is looking for things to change in this crisis, if this should be one of the things that changes. Absolutely. And, and it's funny, anybody that's in the industry is like, thank goodness you're, you know, you're reporting on this because it's a massive problem. And we talked about some of the items that would, you know, sort of be affected by these containers. 77 ships, a record high, means, you know, this problem is as bad as it's ever been. What has the change to 24-7 operations, if it's even been put into place? How has that helped, if it has helped at this point? There's only one terminal out of all the, out of all the terminals between the two ports that are 24-7. There are still 30 percent of the appointments not being taken. But that's because there are inherent problems in those in in the ports that aren't being fixed. Gene Soroka did tell me, though, that they are able to move out more of these containers. Um, as the last time we were on, we still had a bunch that were accruing the penalty, and they still are but, there are, but they are slowly moving out. And so final question, in terms of that penalty, then how many people are paying it, and has it been making a difference? I think it was $100 a day, right? It's $100 a day for every day. And uh, Gene Soroka is going to make an announcement in like the next several, like, the next several days or so if they're going to implement it based on how many containers go through. But when you have all these containers waiting, you've got items like Target, Paul Mitchell Systems. You know, they just had 1,600 containers waiting on one of these unscheduled vessels. But the problem is people are paying big bucks for these vessels, and they don't have an appointment date. <laughs> that, it's insane. So you've got Keurig. They had 50, 55 containers filled of the mini Keurig makers just for Target. And then holiday items. These are items that the retailers want to sell, and they can't because they're on floating storage. That's amazing. Who would have known all of these problems exist in the way things are run? Lorianne, thanks so much for joining us to explain it. We appreciate it. Lorianne LaRocco. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.